You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Front now, it's Archbold trying to hold off the challenge of Glenn O'Shea of Australia. Coming down the finishing straight, Archbold takes goal. O'Shea takes the bronze. We'll look, but there's the win. Look at the face on Archbold. Archbold has got the gold. Shane Archbold, the flying mullet, winning Commonwealth Games gold there in 2014. After a long career, he's finishing up on the world tour next week and joins us now out of Spain. Thanks for your time, Shane. How have you come to this decision? Um, it's not an easy one. Um, I guess I wanted to make it on my own terms. I didn't want to go out of the sport waiting until January next year, looking for a job, chasing for a job. Um, I haven't had the best of the last two seasons. A couple of times with COVID and a few other injuries that have been lingering for a couple of years now and illness. And it was just seemed like the right time to uh, decide to stop. I mean, originally it was only an idea and I sort of thought about it off and on, off and on. And then I just decided that I'm getting older. I'm getting slower. They're getting faster. So it's no better time than now. Did any part of you uh, or at any time did you lean towards carrying on? Um. I did go through up and down like this year. I've been thinking about it already last year because I was, I was under a two-year contract with Bora Hansgrove finishing, well, yeah, December. Um, so I was already thinking about it last year. Maybe this is my last. I would love to do two more years. Um, let's see how it goes. And then it was just getting more to the point of retiring than continuing, but it was to and fro between the two for sure. I mean, I still love the sport and everything about it. It's just um, the athletic side of it is just a little bit too much now, I guess <laughs> the easiest way to say it. On your uh, Instagram post where you uh, where you made the announcement, I guess, uh, you wrote, I've lived the best times and the worst. What did you mean by the worst? I mean, I guess I didn't elaborate <laughs> the best way. The worst of the sport, like I've had some pretty down times with my uh, my crash in the tour in 2016 which left me with broken pelvis and then the following year with well back injuries that were lasted for a year and a half off and on and then I finally found myself back in the pro peloton and my team folded overnight in August which left me jobless and then I was back to the amateur and then yeah it was just a heavy time I mean in the beginning, I never really looked at the lows, so I always just went from high to high, and I just dealt with the lows and didn't really care about them. But then, obviously, the more you have, the more they, the more it takes it out of you. Let's say. How did you deal with them? What What were the mechanisms you used to get through those times? I just didn't think about it. <laughs> I just thought, I'd... Yeah, denial. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> That's basically what I did. Though I just, I just decided, like. The crash in the tour, I wasn't even, in my eyes, I wasn't good enough to, like, I never thought I was going to the Tour de France. I'd already done the Olympics on the track and the Commonwealth Games, and I'd had a great career, and it was just a bonus to be professional for the tour. And then I was just, you know, I'm lying in bed, I was like, okay, now I'm starting to walk again, start training again. And then the back started, and it was like, okay, I'll sort this one out. And it was just sort of like, the whole time it was like, I didn't expect to be in the sport for more than to begin with to get out of the junior ranks or to go to Commonwealth Games and then it was the Olympics. Like I always just took everything like, oh, this is just another step. It's great. Like I didn't expect this. So the bad times were the same. It was just like, oh yeah, I didn't expect to be where I am now anyway. So if this is the end, it didn't matter. So I just didn't really, I just tried to recover and get over it and carry on. I want to ask you about some of the highs, uh, and you've mentioned a couple of them. 2012 Olympics, uh, you, you won silver at the 2011 World Champs in the Omnium. Uh, that earned you selection for the 2012 Olympics. Becoming an Olympian, uh, where does that sit when you look back on your career? The Olympics is still better, to be absolutely honest. Um, obviously, I did go in there as a, a medal, potentially, I wouldn't say a favourite, but a medal hope. Um, in my own eyes, I wasn't going off the media's point of view for that. It was just I wanted to get a medal. So I did leave the Olympics a little bit disappointed, but then my redemption from that was Commonwealth Games winning the 
the scratch race and helping numerous teammates win title with Tom Scully and then um, Jack Bauer on the road we're getting second like that was obviously a highlight to become an Olympian would definitely be right up there number one but then I left the Olympics like hungry for more it just when I made the decision to turn professional on the road I just never um, considered the track again or the Olympics like on the road is only ever one spot in there in my career there wasn't ever a course that suited my style of riding so I never let's say got the chance to go back I was happy to go back to Commonwealth Games for the last um, last time as well but my out and out highs would for sure be being Olympian winning the Commonwealth Games and then winning the national title road race title in 2020 that was potentially the best Two times up, two days on the bike, the scratch race, Commonwealth Games title, and the uh, road race national title. Yeah, 2014. What a what a time for you, as you say. Not just the medals you won, because you got the bronze in the team pursuit as well, the gold in the scratch, as you mentioned, helping Tom Scully with his gold, Jack Bauer with his silver. Uh, riding on the track, riding on the road. Uh, you mentioned there once you got onto the road, that became your singular focus. H- how did you enjoy the track events, though? Did you enjoy cycling on the track? Oh, I love it. I mean, that was always my passion. I grew up doing it in Timaru and then racing in Dunedin and Moscow and then national championships. And then um, the best times in my life were like traveling with the track boys, 2009, 10, 11. We used to do a stint in uh, Kutztown, Pennsylvania in America. And we had the, oh, the most fun there. It was just like my style of racing, carnival racing, multiple races a day. I just love every moment of the track and it was hard to say goodbye to the track but it was harder to turn down the opportunity to turn professional because that's most people's dream in cycling and it was the next step for me i'd give the olympics a go i'd won the commonwealth games i'd give multiple world championships a good go so it was the next obvious step and i made the decision like a lot of riders continue on the track and juggle between track and road but I just decided that I wasn't naturally talented enough to do both. Like I wanted to concentrate fully on the road. I did dabble again uh, with Aaron Gate in end of 2018, start of 2019 when I was back to amateur la- ranks on the road. Thought about potentially making a comeback on the track, but um, I also really enjoyed that campaign with him racing on the track. It's where I'm... Uh, let's say, happiest. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, those those grand tours, Tour de France, Vuelta, Espana, uh, the other road um, events that you do, they just look brutal, man. Uh, and and you hear and read cyclists say that, that you have to be able to endure a lot of pain, a lot of pain. Is that is that the case? Are they just so, so tough? Even when you're at the top of your game and going, that everything goes smoothly and you're not ill and not crashing, it's like really physically demanding, obviously, and mentally as much demanding. They are brutal. But the sports are obviously changing, like every sport's becoming more professional. Everyone's doing everything they possibly can with food, sports science, and everything. And now it's just getting harder and harder. Like there used to be races on the calendar that. You could go to, let's say, not quite at 100%, still do your job perfectly, have fun, relaxed atmosphere, let's say. But now the sport has just become like a whole other level. It's just like every race you go to is just like full professionalism, which it was always professional, but it's like you have to be. And as small as you, as you have a small problem or you're unlucky enough to get COVID, it just sets you back and then you've got to restart again. Like it happened to me last year, it happened to me uh, six weeks ago, I had COVID again and that was like the final decision for me. It was like, I'm not enjoying it as much as I used to. Um, It's time for something else. It's time to stop putting myself through this punishment year in, year out. So what are you going to do now? Um... Right now, finish the season, um, put my feet up and enjoy it for a bit. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's been a hectic years. Well, I can say 
decades now. It's been two two decades since I started in uh, Tamaru racing. And from there, it's just been from high to high, low to low, one step in front of the other. And now it's just like, it'd be nice to take a step back and enjoy it and work out what I'm going to do next. Well, congrats on a terrific career, mate. Um, I know you've got a, uh, an event or two to go. Once that's done, you, you can sit back and reflect and then, I guess, plan for what the uh, the future might hold. Appreciate you taking the time for a chat, Shane. All the best, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, Shane. Shane Archbold there. Uh, the flying mullet. You can just hear in his voice how philosophical he is. Man, that's got to be a tough, tough road to hoe, doesn't it? The life of a professional cyclist, plus everything that's been thrown his way in the last little while. Commonwealth Games gold medalist in 2014, won Team Pursuit bronze that same year and helped another couple of uh, Kiwis win medals in Glasgow. Uh, Road Grand Tours, um, came back here and won the New Zealand Road Championships in 2020. Um, must say, it's a great interview. This guy's my idol. Even though I'm twice his age, the self-discipline he had to train in the dark places you go through and to achieve what he has is amazing. It is. It really is. Um, just wonder whether there might be something on the horizon for Shane Archbold. He said there he's just going to sort of sit back and not do too much. I just wonder. We'll just uh, keep an eye on that. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio. Murray Deeker is back with a brand new podcast. Murray Deeker's Sporting Lives will interview legends of sport, uncovering their stories. Devin Conway. It was a real surprise when you belted your hand into your bat and broke your hand in the T20 semi final. Yeah, massive learning curve, Murray. And when I made that mistake and punched my bat, it was certainly something I regretted instantly. New episodes each week on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Murray Deeker's Sporting Lives, brought to you by Gold Sport.